Hey, welcome to this edition of the Inside Scoop. So grateful that you decided to press play. You know, you could be watching anything right now. It is the internet and it is all available for you. But you decided to press play and watch this edition of the Inside Scoop. And for that, both myself and Bashal, we know that you're going to get a ton of value. In fact, if you've ever, you know, wavered on your confidence thinking, ah, I know I got to be doing videos. I know I got to be putting myself out there. I know I got to be speaking, whether it's on camera or it's on stages. You know that as a coach or as a healer, as an inspired soul, you got to get your message out to people. And there's no better way to do it than get out and be on camera, be on stages and speak. But at the same time, speaking is the number one fear in the world. So we've got uh, Bashal Sarkar here, who is the king of confidence, and I'm going to be introducing you to him in just a few minutes, um, and uh, he's going to be sharing with you some of his tools, some of his techniques, and how he's training entrepreneurs to be able to speak with confidence and really own their message and own that camera and stage. So we're going to dive into that in just a few minutes. Well, a freedompreneur is someone who works when they want, where they want whenever they want, with whoever they want, doing the thing you love to do. You've got a calling, you've got a message, a mission, a passion, an inspiration, some knowledge or service that you know you were meant to bring out to the world in a big way. The club is the place where you come to get equipped with the tools, the strategies, and the support to creating that as your reality. Now, your guest today, Bishal Sarkar, is a freedompreneur by that definition. He is the author of the book, I Love Public Speaking. He is the creator of the largest speaking course in India. Now, guys, if you know how big India is as far as population, that is definitely, <laughs> that is a huge, huge accomplishment. He is the founder of and the creator of the largest speaking course in India called the Confident Speaker Conference. And he's become a friend of mine and a great, great energy. So, Bashal, welcome to the Inside Scoop. It is close to, what, 1.30 in the morning? 1.30? That's right, 1.45. But any time available for Nick and your community, brother. 1.45 in the morning. So he's clearly committed. Welcome to the Inside Scoop. How are you doing today, brother? I appreciate you being here. Man, I'm, I'm all in, all up, all energized pumped up to add value to the people watching this video, making them confident in camera, making them confident in person, and making them confident in life. I love it, man. That's fantastic. Listen, guys, we're going to dive into this. If you're here watching this live or you're watching the recording, go ahead, hit that like and love button. Send some of those bubbles across the screen. We appreciate those. If you're watching this on the YouTube channel, make sure you give it a thumbs up and you hit subscribe so you get notified for when all the new interviews and trainings get uploaded. Definitely leave comments below. We get comments already coming in. So thank you so much for leaving a bunch of comments. Princess is here with us. Thank you so much. And the last thing I'm going to ask you to do is share this video out. There are so many coaches, healers, inspired souls, entrepreneurs who are holding back. They're not getting on camera. They're not getting out there. They're not getting their message out to as many people as they possibly can. And they're holding back because they lack that confidence to be on camera and to be on stage. So share this video out so that we can get some training to them so we can instill them with some confidence and they can go help more people. And together as a collective, we can help make some positive impact here and now. So while you guys are doing that, uh, thank you guys so much. Michelle, let's learn a little bit about you. How did you get into this world of speaking about confidence and putting on the largest conference of uh, the largest speaking course in India? I mean, how did you how did you come to this point where you're at today? Yeah, I mean, many people think that you got to be a born as a confident speaker or not. Look, I was born a baby the same way like everybody. I came out my mommy's tummy naked and I was hungry. I wanted some milk. So uh. so I did not have the confidence. Neither I was born with the presentation skills to make a powerful presentation. I didn't have all that. In fact, I was born and brought up in a small town called Shiliguri, which was in um, which was in West Bengal in India. And I studied in a Bengali medium school. So English was my third language. And um, until I went to college, I never had an opportunity to speak. And, you know, that the idea that I could stand in front of people and speak. I didn't know that people could do that. I just thought that that's something meant for all those teachers and the big people and the politicians with mics. I, I never knew all that because that was a completely unknown 
space for me. And growing up, I was I've always been an introverted person. That doesn't mean that introverted people can never speak. It's just that uh, we love to work in isolation until and unless we have to, um, you know, go out and speak to people. And that's why many times people think that. Um, if I'm an introverted person or if I did not have a great background, I can't be a great speaker, which is not true. Um, many times after, you know, after struggling with public speaking, when I went for my first job and then I started my business, public speaking was a big hurdle for me. Confidence was a big challenge for me. And um, once I overcame those challenges by getting help from mentors, I mean, I went I went. Um, through the smaller and the slower way, Nick, which is, you know, books and practice and all that, which is awesome. But later on, I found out that if I wanted faster results, if I wanted results faster than everybody else, I needed to do the things that nobody's doing. So I started investing in mentors and coaches and this person and that person. And I learned the foundations and the techniques and the strategies that gave me results. And that's when people started coming to me and said, hey, dude, you were the same guy one year ago. You sucked on stage right now. You're rocking on stage. How are you doing that? I said, let's go for the lunch. I can I can happily show you because I was very elevated at that time. You know, you know, the kind of feeling you have when somebody comes to you for the first time or maybe you're not a nutrition expert, but you lose a little bit of weight and people come and say, tell me what you're eating. You say, come, I'll show you everything. Uh -huh. And I had that feeling. And that's when I saw that a lot of people first 10, 15, then hundreds and a lot of a lot of people were coming, gathering around me and saying, you know, day after day, hey, how do you do that? And that's when I started understanding that this is not just a problem that I had. It's a problem that many men have today. And that's when I started creating many trainings, workshops. And now we have the Confidence Speaker Conference, which has been the number one most practical public speaking course in India. Wow, that's amazing. Amazing wow. story. And it's so practical. Like, it's, so practical. it's relatable. It's relatable. Because we all, because like we you all said, we're born. Like we're all born naked. You know, we all come out hungry. We all come out, you know, ready. And I think so many people think, oh, you either got confidence or you don't and don't see it as something that can be trained up, you know, and I think that's a beautiful yeah. thing. It's a skill. It's not a talent. I mean, some people are born confident. I hate <laughs> them too. <laughs> I hate them too. But it's a skill just like cycling. I mean, you, you don't, when somebody cycles well, you don't say, oh my God, that's a born cycler. No, they developed the skill. They had somebody who showed them, here is how you handle, here is how you pedal, here is how you go. And every single time you fall down, here is how fast you can get back up and then do it again. That's the value of a mentor. So absolutely, it's a skill you can learn, just like Nick does, help a lot of people, a lot of coaches and healers develop their businesses. It's a skill. There are many multiple parts of that. Doesn't happen overnight, but does happen over time if you have the right yes. mentor. In the same way, it's a skill. You know, you got to learn how to confidently communicate. First of all, how you got to believe in yourself, uh, how to overcome your own self-limiting belief, how to become a confident speaker, and then how do you communicate what you have here and what you have here, and get it out there. Yeah, I love it. Just want to acknowledge a couple of the people that have have been been with us. And uh, so, first of all, uh, Polo uh, Basu. I hope I'm saying that right. He's giving us a smiley face. Thanks yeah. so much for tuning in. And uh, cool. And Princess Jules with us, who's shared the video out and, you know, sending her blessings. Thank you. And Cindy's here with us who says hello. Hello, Cindy. Thanks so much for, for tuning in. So once again, guys, keep the likes and comments coming in and all that kind of good stuff. So let's let's yeah. dive into this conversation about speaking confidently on camera, because in my opinion, you know, we were talking off camera just you know, I do these daily shows, right? Every day I show up 4.15 Eastern time on my Facebook page. I go live with an interview or with by myself with the training. And, uh, you know, people ask me, geez, how do you do that? And you look confident on camera. How does someone develop confidence on camera so they can feel good about getting out there and sharing their message on Facebook Lives, for instance? You get rewarded in public for which you sweat in private. Um, what I mean by that is if you, you know, many people want that perfect recognition, whether it's on camera, whether it's on stage, mm. you know, I love what William Shakespeare said, the world is my stage. So it's not about just the camera. When it, when you say camera, that's like a tool, it's a technology, but it, the same thing applies when you're going out there and you have the fear and you don't have the enough confidence to speak on stage or, or if you're going to speak on a video conference meeting like this, or maybe you're giving a presentation in front of 500 um, people in annual conference or of course the Facebook Live and I wanna make a video, whatever you do, the first step is always to understand that you gotta have the right preparation in your mind. Now, 
when I say preparation, many people think that I have to prepare for days and days and weeks and weeks and months and months before I'm ready because many times, Nick, we have this mentality which I call the illusion of perfection. I have to be perfect before I get started. Um, no, you don't have to. It's like saying I have to be an engineer before going to the engineering college. No, right. it's through the process is what you become. It's the, it's the becoming process. So you want to prepare. So you don't have to go on a national TV in the beginning. You can just do a small little YouTube live or a Facebook live, or maybe you can start doing little videos to friends saying on WhatsApp and send them. And, and what's going to happen is many times I have a, I have a client called Kalpana. She's a part of my mastermind. And it's funny. We have like an insider joke in the mastermind. She always says, Vishal, anytime I make a video, I take like close to 100 takes. And she, she sometimes says in a joking way, but you got to understand that in the beginning, that's going to happen. You're going to make the video. You're not going to like the video when you watch it. You're going to delete the video and do it again. And that's fine. But you're going to understand that that's how mastery happens. Sometimes you got to do it over and over again, over and over again, and get a structure uh, of what you're going to speak and then do it over and over and over again. Uh, don't be afraid of fear of judgment of other people. Uh, just do it. And that's how you take the first step. And that's how you make things happen. Yeah, I, it's, it's yeah, funny they talk it's about the, the fear of judgment because, fear of judgment because I was, gonna go, I was gonna go there and actually say, I think one thing that stops a lot of people is fear of what other people are gonna do. So what actually allows us to move beyond the fear of what others think? Do you have any tips or advice around that? I mean, before I talk about a tactic, I gotta set the foundation in the right way. I mean, if you just, if we go back, Nick, I, I know we, you talk about it to people as well. A lot of your confidence issues our childhood issues that you had that you're still carrying around. These are the programming that you had. You know, many times society people, our parents with good heart, they say to us, don't talk to strangers <laughs> or don't brag about yourself or you know, things like that. And then we understand we, we as this as this raw material, we get the message that, oh, I see. So what I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to hide out from the world. I'm, I'm supposed to I'm supposed to not shine the spotlight on me. I'm not supposed to feel good about myself. So as we go on and we become 10 and then 15, then 20 and 25 and then 40 and 45, we become this hiding personality. And we think that if I'm good, other people will say absolutely. But at the same time, sometimes you have to talk about it yourself and you have mm -hmm. to have that belief about yourself. So now coming to the question, how do I overcome that fear of judgment? It, I think, comes back to self-love and self-respect. So often, Nick, we are looking for that love, that respect, that that appreciation from somebody else apart from ourselves. And that's why we say, I want to go for that video, but if it doesn't have the perfect background, my wife will not like me. My uncle won't like me. My boss won't like me. My clients won't like me versus understanding will the man and the woman in the mirror will like me. Because if you, the man in the man or the woman in the mirror, if that person likes you, you got the game already. You have got the biggest cheerleader and you got to shout with greatness within yourself. And I think that's the way. So, it, you know, these, this takes a lot of practice inside, outside speaking, you know, understanding your own self and self-love and nurturing yourself and giving yourself the right nurture, whether it's a massage, whether it's giving yourself the time, whether it's appointment, whether it's doing a little bit of more journaling. These are tools. These are techniques that you do in order to believe in yourself more, be sold on yourself. And that's when when you get the camera or that's when you go for the presentation in front of 25 people in the boardroom, you're like, man, I'm on. Why am I on? Because I love myself. And people can sense that power in your voice, in your eyes, in your smile. And they say, I don't know who that is, but that's a somebody. I don't know what he does, but he does something. I don't know what's special about him, but I want to be special like him. That's when you know that you have achieved power and that's how you overcome your fear of judgment. Yeah, and I think that it's easy to, to forget, even though we're talking to coaches and healers and we preach this, but it's easy to forget that the world sees in us what we see in ourselves. Absolutely. Right. And so when we see and we love ourselves, accept ourselves, and we have such a good relationship with ourselves, then naturally the people outside gravitate and support that because we're all looking for that. 
Yeah, and and many times, you know, I know you work with a lot of high achievers, Nick. I work with a lot of people who are, you know, project managers, leaders, managers, CEOs, IT professionals. These are people who have years of years of experience, <clears throat> and many times entrepreneurs as well. And and these are people who have because they have a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, a lot of success. I call I call it they have this the worthiness trap, which is the self talk is I know the world admires me, but I feel I'm not worth it. So I will have this mask of masculinity so that I show power, but inside I feel lonely. I inside I feel not valuable enough. And that's mm. that's a story that you have chosen to believe in yourself. That's a story that many people have sold you. See, even if the people love you, but at the end of the day, if you don't love yourself, you're not going to pick up that phone. You're not going to pick up right. that presentation. You're going to say, "Hey." I have something very important. Can you ask that guy to go for that presentation? Or, oh, I know I'm supposed to do the Facebook Live, but you know, I got very, very busy doing something else. Can I do it next week, coach? These are subconscious excuses that we give and the procrastination. And, and the reason for that is because we are not believing in ourselves. And I'm saying to you right now, whoever is watching this video, it's time to wake up because the world is calling you. No matter what you're doing right now, the world is calling you because your message, whether it's an informative message, inspirational message, or you help people transform their lives, there is somebody who's crying right at this moment because they don't know you, because they can't receive your help. It's time to stop thinking about yourself and focus on the other person. Because remember this line, it's hard to be nervous when your heart is on service. Mm, nice. Very nice. I love it. And I love that you brought the word service into it because you know, that's something that me and you both resonate with. And I think 100%. why we, why we, yeah, you know, sort of why we've been attracted to each other and come together is, is this idea of service. And you know, I always say sales is service. If you're really selling, you're really serving other people. And if you're thinking about other people, there, there's no room for insecurity. There's no room for, you know, not being able to, because you're going to do whatever you can to help the people you're meant to help. Now, I, I want to talk a little bit more about the insecurity, but this time on a physical level, you know, uh, many sure. people that tune into me are, 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 are women coaches, women healers, right? And even guys, I know guys, we, we have our own physical insecurities, you know, how do we, uh, you know, how do we deal with the, oh, I don't like, yeah, I was going to say, I don't like my hair. I don't like my haircut, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't like my hair. You know, I don't like I don't like my the way my eyebrows look today. I don't like the way that my teeth are crooked or because I have one eye that kind of goes in this way a little bit. And right, you know, and I like to make fun of myself and use myself as an example. I get all these facial sort of stuff that I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I can be more handsome and all that kind of stuff. So how do we deal with the physical insecurities that come up when we get on camera? Um again, the context is camera or in front of people yeah. anytime. Um, yeah, anytime you're thinking about, um, you know, this is like the common self-talk in, in presentation. And I'll say the same kind of self-talk in videos, which is, oh, I got to go for the presentation, but my hair is not right. Like you said, or or is the zipper on? Or what about my shoes? Is something stuck between my teeth? You got to understand. Um, people don't listen to what you say. People don't even believe in what you say. People listen to see if you believe in what you say. Hmm. I'm going to repeat what I said. People don't listen to what you say. They don't believe what you say. They listen to see if you believe in what you say. So it's not about your physical. I mean, of course, I mean, you want to look good. You want to have the right things for yourself. But I've got to understand that the reason many times we don't feel good enough about our body or about our face or maybe I have too many pimples on my face. I don't I'm not fair enough. I don't have. Uh, my my tummy is big. You got to understand that people are not coming to see your pimples and your tummy. They are coming to get a message from you, whether it's on a camera or face to face. And many times we have those issues inside about our body because we haven't self we haven't accepted ourselves as we are. Rather, we are seeing somebody else and comparing mm -hmm. ourselves to an audience member who's sitting in the front row. Or we see uh, somebody like my video and I know that that person is very slim and I feel not good enough. So it comes back to the same thing. When you have deep level of self-love and self-respect about yourself, you're going to have that confidence about your body as well. And if you don't like yourself at, at any level, um, we got tools for that. I mean, when I say we, I mean, we. the world got tools for that. Go to the gym, go for that running, increase your energy, that vitality. And immediately, you know, one of my mentors, Rory Vidin, once said, 
that if you have never worked out for the last five years, 10 years, and he said this line, he said, you're five days away from, five workouts away from feeling good about your body. Five workouts. Mm -hmm. You do workout for five days, you already feel like I'm jazzed up, I'm juiced up, I have the vitality, the energy. So if you don't feel good about yourself, go to that gym, get some good haircut, buy some good <laughs> shirt, and then show up, show up in the world. Because if you don't show up for yourself, nobody else is gonna do that for you. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Don't just sit there and kind of like, oh, I don't feel good about myself. Uh, I guess that's just the way it is. But, you know, take some action. And I love how you always bring it back to mindset, bring it back to the inner world, right? You know, it all starts there. So talk to us a little bit about, you know, we've been talking a lot about gaining confidence on camera, just doing it. You know, I love that. You know, I always say you can't, you know, if you want to learn to swim, you can read about swimming, you can watch the Olympics all day long, but eventually you got to jump in the pool, right? And that you're not, you're not going to do it. And, you know, you share the same philosophy and, and some of the same, uh, some of the same uh, mindsets about things, which is fantastic. Talk to us a little bit about it off camera as well. You know, mm -hmm. as coaches and healers, inspired souls and entrepreneurs, we got to get our message out there, whether it's on camera, whether it's in front of an audience. Talk to us a little bit about gaining confidence in speaking in general, whether it's on camera or off camera as well. Sure. Let me give some tips about how to actually give a confident presentation, whether it's on camera or anywhere else. Now, let's we have spoken a little bit about the confidence, the inner stuff. Let's talk about how to structure that. Here's yeah. the deal. Many times we are victim of the world of information. We think that you know, here is how most people in my world, uh, I mean, the, the people that I coach, they here is how they prepare for a presentation. They go to the laptop, they open the PPT or PowerPoint presentation, whatever, and they write the first slide, welcome. And the last slide is thank you. And then they put a lot of things in between. You know, this is not the right way to think. A PPT or presentation or the slides in a webinar is to support the points. This is not the, you gotta understand that that's not the presentation you are the presentation so mm. how do you structure very very simple structure i'll tell you we we go in depth in the in the program there are you know a 17 point checklist first of all you got to have a very powerful attention grabbing introduction when i say introduction most people start their presentation this way hi my name is bishal sarkar today i want to talk about 17 leadership ideas that will really change your life and i think you will really help it and the first <laughs> one right that's how they, the first one is you must have a lot of energy and you must must make sure nobody's sleeping. No, you gotta <laughs> jump right then. You gotta understand. You gotta understand you have seven to fifteen seconds to make people decide whether they want to listen to you or not. And if mm. they are not listening to you, they are checking the phone and the WhatsApp and the email when you are talking. And that's an insult. So you want to have an attention grabbing opening in the first few seconds. You want to grab the attention and you want to let people know what you're going to speak about. You want to give a roadmap. Like, for example, in the next five minutes on so this Facebook Live, you're going to receive three tips that will absolutely help you improve your health so that you can have more vitality and have more health. If you're giving a presentation in the next 25 minutes, you're about to receive some practical tools and ideas on how to absolutely take your company to the next level. Right. You want to set the roadmap. You want to hook it up in business, in the marketing world. It's called the hook. Right. You want to you want to give something to people that 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 people feel attractive uh, in the beginning. So that's what you want to do. Then you want to go to the um, content part. So first is intro, then the body of the presentation. Now, there are five parts in that um, because of the time limitation. I'll just quickly tell you what you want to understand is people do this. People put a lot of information like too soon. Uh, they give like. Mm -hmm. 45 minutes worth of information in 10 minutes. Understand that people are not able to digest that way. I mean, I remember recently about two months ago, I went to a relative's home. And, and if you know, you know, I know you know a lot about India, Nick. Um, you know, she gave me like food for like three people in my plate, you know? And, and I, I didn't know, <laughs> you read it too. <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do. I said, hi, I, and you know, if you know about Indian culture, if a relative has given you food and you say, no, I can't eat that much, they're not listening to you at that time. They're like, no, no, no. At that time, bring more. <laughs> you know, take a little bit more. I was like, I, I was so, so unhappy about it, but I didn't want to be rude. So I ate a little bit, then wasted a bit. And I was not able to digest. So I didn't have a good feeling about that home. And, and in presentation is the same way. If you got 15 minutes and you get, give too much information, it's like, have more, have more. And they are saying, dude, stop it. And he's like, have more. And you don't want to do that. You understand that we don't live in an information age right now in content and presentation. It's about infotainment, infotainment.
entertainment, information plus entertainment. So you want to have some humor. You want to connect with people. You want to check, make sure that you're taking some questions in between. And you don't want um, you know, too much formality because understand that in today's world, people don't want to listen to a boss. They want to listen to a friendly expert who cares for them. I call it the empathetic expert. So any information you have, whether it's a technical presentation, it's you're teaching something about health or relationship or aligning your chakras, anything, you got to make it interesting. Don't put too, too much information in the body. And the final is the conclusion. So we spoke about intro, body, and then conclusion. The conclusion, you want to revise everything and then end with the vision. You know, tell them the, the favorite st world, station of the world, FM station, WIIFM, which is what's in it for me. What's in it for tell them, you know, what's going to happen to their lives once they apply what you have taught them and then say, hey, do you have any question or end with a quotation or end with a vision? Tell them how this will absolutely transform their life or transform their company or transform their project. And that's how you do this. So introduction, body and conclusion. And that's how you rock a presentation. I love it, man. That's fantastic. And I love that about vision because I find that so many presentations I've listened to, they don't share the overall vision and the right. audience I can see is disconnected from how the information will help them actually achieve what it is that they want. Do you have any Absolutely. tips around uh, talking about vision, like how you actually create an enrolling vision for the audience to see themselves take part in? Absolutely. So many times when people are talking about a technical topic, and when I say technical, I don't mean computer only. It can be that you're talking a technical topic about health or how to get an adjustment or or even, you know, tactical topics like, how, you know, a report in a, right. um, a company or, or a sales report, whatever that thing is. Before you go for the presentation, ask yourself, you know, what, how does this help this overall organization or overall person? You know, for example, if you're talking about adjustment, um, uh, of your chakras or chakra alignment, uh, what happens? So I, I ask this question, so what, five times. So here's an example. People will able to align their chakras. So what? So that they have total internal balance. So what? So that they can do the outside work more um, effortlessly. So what? So that they can have more peace of mind. So what? So that they can have more peace of mind and make an impact in the world and become the leader that they want to be. Bam, that's the vision. Five so what's. So mm -hmm. in the end, if you're talking about, for example, let's say uh, leadership, instead of saying, so these are the leadership techniques, in the end, you can say these are the leadership techniques. And I can tell you, once you do this, once you apply these leadership techniques, not, not only are you going to become that great leader, not only people are going to chase you instead of you chasing them, but you're going to make an impact. You're going to serve the humanity. You're going to serve the company. And you, are, you will become this ultimate leader that people are going to talk about for years and years to come because that's going to be your legacy. So don't wait. Join us right now and take this leadership tactics and implement so that you can become this lifelong legacy evergreen leader that people will talk about. And that's how you're going to do this. Boom. So you're taking that tactic and making it a part of an overall vision. And you end with that because you want to always end with a powerful, powerful vision because otherwise the, the presentation goes down. You want to leave people on a high all the time, just like a desert. You go for a good dinner, but if the desert is not good, you say, um, Food was fine, but but yeah, something was missing because the ending is very, very powerful. That's what people remember as they go out. So leave them on a high. That's how you create a vision for your presentation. I love it. Fantastic. Look, man, you you definitely practice what you preach. You you have tremendous amounts of confidence and enthusiasm. You're very enrolling. Uh, tell everybody out there how they can get a hold of you, connect with you, so they can they can continue to tap into what you're teaching and apply it yeah. to their own businesses. So here's the thing. I love Nick. I love him as a brother, as a friend. We have a lot of, uh, apart from the business stuff, you know, Nick, I know you agree with that, even though we have never spoken about this next thing that I'm going to speak, but but we are spiritual people first, business mm, people second. Absolutely. Um, and we have the spiritual base, both of us. And by the way, when I say spiritual, I don't mean I don't mean religion. These are two different things altogether that many people don't understand. We, we are both very um, enrichingly spiritual human beings. And that's why we connect so much. And I want to say thank you to you, Nick, first of all, for for um, for bringing this experience to the people that needed to hear it today. 
And whether somebody's watching it live or the replay, you are here because of Nick, because Nick cared enough for you to schedule this interview series with uh, the, the authorities of the world that many people that he interviews. So gratitude to you, Nick, first of all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate and, it. And second, I want to say that if you are part of this and if you're watching this, I'd love to send you a copy of my book. I love public speaking. Just, just go to bishalsarkar.com. Um, you can see the information there, get it. But if you want more information about our upcoming conference, I mean, we have people, Nick, the upcoming conference, we have people from Afghanistan, Africa. We have one person from um, from Middle East country who's coming here to be a part of it. So it's not just limited to India. We do it in India, but and we have so many people. So if you want to come to the Confident Speaker Conference, um, go to bishalsarkar.com. Um, that's the spelling of my name, Bishal, B-I-S-H-A-L-S-A-R-K-R. Go there, grab it. And I just want to end with this, Nick. Um, understand that you don't need to be perfect because confidence is not about perfection. It's about connection. And whether you're a leader, whether you're a manager, <clears throat> whether you're a project manager, whether you're a coach, you're a healer, a mother, a father, anybody else, there are people who need to hear your message. The experience that you have heard, that you have had so far, the story of your life, the information and the wealth of knowledge that you have, don't die to your life. Don't die to your fears. Don't die to your insecurities. But rather, it's time for you to step up the game and step in, just like Nick, just like Bishal, just like all these people, and step in to the world to share your message, to share the world. Because I can tell you, when you do that, you will see one person coming, getting the help, then two people getting the help, then five, and then 10. And very soon, you'll have hundreds of people following you and leading their ways with your mentorship, with your help, whether you're a coach, healer, leader, manager, product, project manager, it's time for you to step up. And I'm saying, I'm giving you my hand, hold it, let's do it together. Because public speaking is not about perfection, it's all about connection. Love it, man. Fantastic. You're a powerful speaker and I absolutely love your message. I do invite you when the show is done to leave your links in the comments below so people can just click on it and get to your website. Guys, I do invite you to take advantage of uh, Bashal's offer. Go grab his book. I mean, speaking is absolutely the number one way to grow your coaching healing business. Like there is no other way. It is the best way. And it is a timeless way. Whether F Facebook shuts down tomorrow or YouTube shuts down or some other platform shows up, you'll see that the people who always rise are the people who can get their message out and they can get it out in a confident way. And that's a, it's not just a business skill, it's a life skill. So I'm, I'm all about you going out and do that. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in here to the Inside Scoop. If you got value from this, give it a like, give it some hearts, make sure you hit the thumbs up, press subscribe, share it out with your friends and family.